the Brexit process is concluded and perhaps the UK has left the EU. I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever you do is okay with me. That's your decision. Whatever you're going to do is okay with us. Just make sure we can trade together. That's all that matters. The United States looks forward to finalizing a great bilateral trade agreement with the United Kingdom. This is an incredible opportunity for our two countries, and we will seize it fully. We support the decision of the British people to realize full self-government, and we will see how that goes. Very complicated negotiation and not an easy negotiation, that's for sure. That was the president earlier today reaffirming the United States' commitment to a strong trade relationship with post Brexit England. Joining us now with reaction, he is the Brexit leader, Nigel Farage. How are you, my friend? Good um, to see you. Very well. Good to see you here. Why, why didn't you come to the protest with me? Because I'm hated even more than Donald Trump. <laughs> um, and in fact, uh, uh, I went into a building yeah. in Westminster earlier. And they found I was there. They gathered outside. The protesters. Oh, yeah. And I, had, I had to be got out the fire exit out the back. But uh, look, I've got you a souvenir. Oh, you did? I, no, I do. You came very um, There yes. we are. I think it's very important that we have that. You know the torture. Wait, could you sign it for <laughs> Absolutely. You might, there you go. Because well, you've got to remember that Trump is guilty yeah. of, for climate change, torture. Well, that's what every, I mean, no, every I mean, there's virtually the nothing in the world. By the way, you know, 14 states have record low unemployments, record low unemployments for Hispanic Americans, African Americans, women in the workplace. Oh. And we have more jobs available in America than we have people that take them that are on unemployment. But there's no rationale to this. Do you know, no. every one of those people out there are the same people that go on the anti-Brexit marches. Uh, you know, it's just the same crowd. So what the president in the sun obviously took Theresa made a task. Yeah. I told her how to do it. She didn't do it right. She didn't. Truth of it is, uh, Trump believes in Brexit. The whole administration believes in Brexit. Why? Because they believe in nation states. Why? Because they understand that the European Union is the epicenter of the globalist project. That's what Hillary was for. That's what Donald was against. That's what the election was about. Yeah. And you won by a big margin here. Was... We did win by a big margin, but what we've got now, a couple of years on, um, is an establishment fighting back very hard, uh, a very weak prime minister who doesn't really believe in what she's doing. She says the right thing and never does it. Uh, no, she says the right thing and does the opposite. It's quite extraordinary. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, they, I think they wind her up at the back in the morning, you know, and she... <laughs> oh, ouch. She robotically, ouch. robotically says, we're taking back control of our laws, borders and money. And it sounds great. And then you see what she does and it's different. But I also think this. From the early days of the administration, I remember talking to people around the president and they were saying to me how excited they were about a free trade deal with the UK. Why? Because it showed the world. It's in jeopardy showed the world that America's not protectionist, but it wants fair trade. Free and fair right? trade. Absolutely. Mm. We promised to America that we'd facilitate that once Brexit had happened, but the, the agreement May made last week makes that virtually impossible. What, so I, she, you know. the, the Prime Minister seems to be hanging by a thread from yes. my observation. Okay. Yes. Boris Johnson, big speech coming up on Monday. Do you have a chance? Because he wasn't pro-Trump that I remember. Oh, look, the idea that they're good friends is nonsense. <laughs> you know, I mean, Boris... I love your honesty. Uh, I won't yeah. come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> Boris didn't even want Trump to come to London. But, yeah. hey, times change, and there are certain politicians who can be a little bit malleable with yeah, these things. A little bit? Just the <laughs> way it is. Little... Truth Why is... Why don't you run for truth is, Well, truth is, Boris did join the Brexit party. He may have came late, but he did, and he was important. If we had Boris as leader, we'd be in a far better place than we are with Theresa May. Middle England is in uproar. Do you support him? Well, I... We, Why if, not you? Because well, you are I, the Brexit okay. leader. Yeah, well, I'm, I am... I kind of step back a bit from frontline politics in Britain. But if they drop the ball, and if the Conservative Party you cannot will. sort this out, I'll be back. And next time, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, last question. We, listen, we love our friends in Great Britain. We are tied forever. I only have about 25 seconds. Yeah. We pay 70 plus cents of every dollar for NATO. Why won't Germany step up and why are they making Russia rich again with energy? The whole thing's a joke and underlying it is a desire to build a European army. A European army will undermine NATO and I hope Trump, if they don't pay up within the next six, nine months, starts to withdraw troops and says, hey, we're serious about this. Yeah. Nigel, good to see you again. Pleasure great to be. Great to be. Uh, I actually had some time here, but I was hanging out with the protesters. It's a great fun. city. Oh, thank you for my, my <laughs> gift. Uh, when we come back from London, more Hannity and a programming Rogers note. With us now. Welcome back to the program. Now, you say Mr. Trump is creating a new world order. What is it other than America first? 
America first, but not alone. He laid that out in Davos very clearly earlier in the year, and that's what all countries should do. All countries should put the interests of their own people first, but want to cooperate and trade with other people. But it's exactly but, what he wants to do. Well, except that he's not showing much uh, cooperation when it comes to trade, or when it comes to NATO, or when it comes to... Mrs. May, that's well, not I, a new world. Well, I don't that's know. He's, just, uh, he's managed to get so the... cares everywhere he goes. Well, he's managed to get the German car manufacturers to suggest on the back of what he's been saying that maybe tariffs should be abolished completely on cars across the Atlantic. So, actually, direction of travel on that is interesting. On NATO, well, I mean, come on, for goodness sake. You know, 29 members of the club, only a handful paying their way. I think what he said on that is absolutely right. Just, uh, can you tell me on this extraordinary NATO press conference that he gave this morning, could you tell me one thing he said that was factually accurate? <laughs> well, you know, you must always take Donald Trump seriously, but not always literally. Um, and, and that's the way he does things. He does shoot from the hip, but he, his instincts are strong and his direction of travel is generally right. So when he said that America paid for 90% of NATO, that's not true, obviously. He said that he'd got this brand new deal of billions more from the other NATO members. That's not true. All they did was reinforce the deal that they made in 2014. But yeah, every was... fundamental thing he told us, he was a bit soft. True. He was a bit soft, I agree with you. He could have been harder this morning, um, because it looks Not like... Soft or hard? What he told us was untrue. Well, what is true... There is no more money well, than what, what was is agreed true? in Wales four years ago. What is true is that Germany is paying 1.2% of their GDP towards NATO, and they expect full American protection, and that can't continue. And how disappointing that Theresa May, who had the opportunity yesterday to be the broker, the bridge, if you like, between America and the rest of Europe, didn't take the opportunity. Is there a new world order being created, or is it just America first? Well, uh, I, I think some people at first thought that Donald Trump was an aberration. I now think that has to take very seriously the possibility of two terms. So, first of all, that's another six years of this, and six, you know, eight years altogether of a particular United States policy is something that we really do need to factor in. Uh, it, it is a world order, although I don't yet know what it is, because he is using tariffs aggressively. Uh, he is trying to make some sort of deal, goodness knows what it is, with North Korea. He does want to make some sort of deal, goodness knows what it is, with Putin. Who he meets uh, in Helsinki, and, I think it's Monday. And he's showing an extraordinary amount of hostility to the concept of the European Union. And whereas, you know, on the whole, diplomacy is about people are going to other countries and being insincere in order to not discomfort their hosts, uh, this is not his approach at all. He's come here and spoken from the hip and, you know, blown Theresa May's proposal for Brexit uh, out of the water. So quite a lot of that is new and quite a lot of that has to do with the world. Have you been winding him up on Brexit? <laughs> We've had the odd chat about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, and it's not just him, by the way. No. You, know, you speak to Wilbur Ross or John Bolton no, or any of those I was going to say, you've also been winding up team, uh, team Trump, haven't you? Yeah, well, I like to have a chat with them. Um, Your I, hand was all over that article in tomorrow's Oh, Star. I think, on balance, they're probably more Eurosceptic than I am, Andrew. I mean, they see the European Union as the embodiment of globalism. Yeah. Uh, they believe in nation-states running themselves cooperating with each other, and so do I. So, how do you handle a US president who has his Brexit policy determined by Nigel Farage <laughs> and a British government has to deal with them? How do you do that? I know. Well, you've got to see past the kind of belligerence and the ignorance. I mean, uh, Nigel is actually charming compa I think compared to uh, uh, Trump. He's not got an ounce of charm in him. But you have to respect the the office that he holds. Mm. And I think all of these protests this week are going to add grist to his mill. His whole uh, raison d'etre is, look, I'm America first and look what I put up with. I have to put up with this because I put America first. But he's not a deal maker, is he? He's a deal breaker. He should take some lessons from that guy from Ethiopia. He's not reached a deal. He's broken a lot of deals so far. He hasn't brokered one. So he is rude to Chancellor Merkel. One of, Ger one of America's most important... Well, it's about allies. time somebody was, I'd have thought. Uh, and oh, well, you've been doing it how well I've tried. Can, how well he is going to get on with President Putin. Has he ever met a strong man he doesn't like? 
Well, of course, strong people will always have a certain attraction to other strong people, but... Even authoritarian, um, undemocratic strong men. He certainly is getting on well with the new Italian government. Um, that's a very interesting development. I think we all need to think about that. It isn't, this isn't just Brexit and Trump. Italy shows you there is a trend. The right. whole game is changing. But except the new Italian Prime Minister came out today and said, we didn't agree to pay any more for NATO at all. We don't know what he's talking about. How is that getting on? Well, with they may have to watch themselves in the future, is all I can say. I mean, you know, Obama made all these. Obama made all these veiled threats and never acted upon it. I was slightly surprised by the end of that NATO summit that Trump wasn't a bit stronger. Um, he's sort of kind of claiming a victory where perhaps one wasn't there. Uh, but, listen, uh, the NATO issue will come back again. Uh, and, of course, this is all against the backdrop of a European Union that wants to create its own army. Uh, with Mr. Juncker encouraging people just to pay 1% of their GDP. So this one will run and run. What he, but, but what he's done tonight, Andrew, I think is very significant. I mean, there they all were, the cabinet, at Blenheim Palace, mm. having a grand dinner. And as the coffee and petty falls have been served, somebody would have whispered in, the, in Mrs May's ear, and we've got a bit of trouble with the Murdoch press yeah, in the morning. N Nigel Farage has got to. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> what were they saying yeah. uh, on this? See, the difficulty I find in this is, is as someone who, who kind of analyses and follows policy, I'm not sure there is any policy in this. It's all transactional. Everything Mr Trump sees is a transaction. Mm. There's not a new policy framework being created here. There's not a new world order, as Nigel says. It's, all right, I'm going to get a better deal on NATO out of you. I'm going to get a better deal on trade out of you. There's no overarching theme to this. I'm just going to get better. That's it. Well, yeah. um, um, America first continues to be the theme. But, I mean, in, in the case of what he said on Brexit, of course, um, you know, um, America first would dictate that he would do a deal with the United Kingdom, a bilateral trade deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying, I think, with a fair amount of sadness, is that the proposals that were cleared by the Cabinet on Friday are going to make that impossible. I mean... That, that is a very strong statement. It um, is, but hold on. <coughs> yeah. When President Obama said that we'd go yeah, to the yeah. back of the queue, mm, yeah. uh, you were outraged. How I dare was. an American president interfere in our... You don't... This time you're not outraged, you're well, helping Ob them interfere. Obama set the precedent. American, po American so leaders into it. Right. Well, I tell you what it does do. It's going to make Tory backbenchers think very hard over the weekend, and there's going to be a couple of big votes coming up in Parliament next week. And I think what Trump is saying actually is chiming with the way Middle England are feeling this week. I've never known, you know, small-c conservative rural types be as angry with a conservative government as they are. And I would just suggest that maybe people listen to what Trump has said today, particularly Tory backbenchers, many of whom will lose their jobs if they carry on with that check as a call. The letters There's page a... of the Telegraph has smouldered all week. It has. It? And then the Daily Mail caught up in the same theme today by doing two pages. Yeah. Uh, you probably wrote half of them as well <laughs> while you were writing his article in The Sun with both hands. Where do we go with this? Because it is perfectly possible 